Well, after four months camped outside St Paul's Cathedral, protesters from the Occupy movement have been forced out and their camp dismantled. Bailiffs and police arrived at the site earlier this morning, five days after the group was refused permission to appeal their eviction order any further. Well, joining me now is the Conservative MP Mark Field, uh, responsible for uh, the city, and the uh, former Wall Street analyst Rod Schwartz, who uh, visited the site and was sympathetic. I mean, Mark Field, are you glad that this camp's gone? I think so. I, I think I've always been in favour of the notion of, of protest. I think it's you know something that sets us apart from places like Syria and Egypt, where people get shot in the streets for daring to protest. But the notion of having a semi-permanent encampment at this iconic site at St Paul's for four months. And I think all credit to both the City of London Police and the City of London Corporation. I think they patiently went through a process through the courts, but it was game, set and match for them from last week. And I'm glad that this thing has now been finally resolved. Rod, you switch from banking to protest, if you like. Are, are you glad to see the camp gone? No, I think it was unnecessary. I thought that they, the things they were speaking out for were really important. And I, I thought, actually, they could have let it go a bit further. I appreciate law was done, justice was done, and they've moved on. But the Occupy movement will be with us for quite a while. I think of them kind of like, not quite the canary in the coal mine, but the guy who says, you know, the canary's dead. And they're telling us that there's a real problem here. We need to sort it. I mean, there, there is an issue. They're obviously continuing in camps. We've still got a little bit in Parliament Square and in, in Finsbury, uh, Finsbury Square. Square that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, is this just going to go on and on and uh, elsewhere around the world as well? Well, I think, I, I think it, it does play to something that I've, I've been actually saying for two or three years in the House of Commons, not just since um, Occupy London began, but there has been this increasing disconnect, not just between the rich and the poor, but actually between the super rich and everybody else in society. And I think it struck me that uh, it was resonating with a middle class Tory voting uh, constituents of mine who f feel that somehow the rules of capitalism are somewhat skewed. But I think this particular protest had sort of outstayed its welcome. As I say, this is an iconic site, important for both the Olympics, where London will be a big showcase, but also, of course, the Diamond Jubilee. And just this, this overall concern here that, um, you know, we, we can't have a semi-permanent encampment in mm. place. Well, and and the, it seems their demands were pretty incoherent as well. It wasn't clear what Occupy yeah. were trying to achieve. But, Roy Charles, I mean, wouldn't you say that it's actually at the point that you start irritating people that you're getting your message across? I mean, that might be the horrible, horrible side If you're, not, side if of you're not irritating people, uh, probably uh, you don't really have a really important message. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to push that too far. But I think you're right with what you said. I think that it was the other 99%. We were all angry about uh, the situation that took place in the city. And it was really important for the Occupy people to be the irritant, to be the, the, the let's put it, the sand in the oyster that turns into a pearl, hopefully, to, to let us know and to remind us of the fact that the city was unsustainable, that the system as we've been uh, use as we've been developing it has collapsed and actually that serious changes needed to take place and that it was wrong for one percent of the population to benefit yeah. so massively at the expense but of the see, other 99. But you see, I mean look at the pictures there this is a tiny fraction of the population yet they are occupying a public space yeah. and effectively and they've been moved on no but, no, but effectively pre preventing other yeah. people from using yeah. that everyone space everyone else has got a right to use it I mean, there, um, there's millions of tourists who come every year and one of the most iconic buildings is St Paul's and they looked at this sort of like a third world Shanty well, look town. at Parliament now. And Parliament Square has a self same problem. Hopefully, we're getting that, that sorted out legally. I think one of the issues is, to be honest, Rod, I mean, you know, the city has not died. I mean, the only people who've actually lost their jobs are the chapter at the St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, there wasn't a single, <laughs> didn't bring capitalism to its knees with what happened. And the reality is, financial services is going to be a very important export industry for this country, uh, a big global industry for many, many years to come. And we've got to make sure that we, obviously, the financial services has to change. But by the same token, the notion that somehow this protest is going to bring financial services to its knees. It would be madness for the Western world apart from anything else. I don't think it's going to bring financial services to its knees at all. You're, you're wrong, actually. Quite a lot of people have lost their jobs because the I basic model that, yeah. Of, yes, and for them it's really a tragedy. And well, not you, only you worked at Leland's on, once. And not, all, uh, indeed, and not only uh, did this collapse uh, cause the people in the city to be severely affected, but this collapse also almost brought down a lot of countries along with it. So the, the after effects of this uh, yeah. crisis in capitalism was really, really severe. I don't think anybody, hold on, Mark, I don't think anybody is talking about the end of capitalism in any way. I think what we're talking well, about is capitalism. Sustainable, sustainable capitalism, capitalism which isn't abusive, capitalism which isn't balanced. I mean, the company I run uses capitalistic techniques to raise money for social enterprises and 
and social businesses. I think what's yeah. happened is that this form of capitalism, as we practiced it over the last yeah. 30 years, has just run out of well, steam and has uh, collapsed yeah, on but, itself. But, but here's the thing. I mean, look at what's happening in China and India. Mm. Two and a half billion people, uh, 20, 30 million people a year being added to the global middle class. Mm. They also have a propensity, a cultural propensity to want to save. Look at what's happening in South America, in yeah. sub-Saharan Africa. These are going to be the future uh, savers no. um, for whom but financial it, services but, in but, some form is going to be an no, important part. No, but equally part. it's fair to say that now that, you know, one thing that unites uh, all three main political parties and other political parties in this country now is anti anti-banker bonus rhetoric. And, and, but it was and, abusive because uh, people went yeah, over exactly. the top because they were being uh, paid for things that didn't add any value that to society. were, if you like, you know, the... Uh, uh, the sort of cherry on the cake of that particular. But I, I regret of some of that rhetoric because it, it does creep into this idea that somehow there's a massive capitalism crisis here. I mean, actually, in many ways, the, the, the real crisis, as I've written uh, only in recent weeks, is this whole idea of welfareism. And actually, if you look at what's happening in the developing world, they're going to have a welfare state fit for the 21st century rather than a highly uncompetitive one that we've got here in, the, in Europe. And in America seems to be going down a similar but Mark, line. There is a crisis in capitalism. Were it not for massive bailouts by all Western countries, all our banks would have collapsed. Not just a few. So to pretend that somehow the system is fine, to me, it feels seriously irresponsible. And fortunately, the leaders of all three parties agree on this, and they're all taking different actions to deal with it. All right, so uh, just finally, um, where do you think this protest, Occupy London, goes from here? Uh, well, I, don't, I mean, they've already put out some press releases about expect some more in the month of May. I think they must remain an irritant to us all and to remind us of the fact that the capitalist system that we have needs to be in balance and for the benefit of all, not just for the few. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you.